we're recording. This is, I think, the first Sunday in two months that I've started recording somewhere before the first lesson. Uh, so that's, to me, that's an exciting milestone. Okay. And the sharing is starting, and I chose to, uh, to share with a picture of our baptismal font uh, in our worship space. I took that uh, back in March before we closed. Um, I wanted to, to remind us we are gathered today uh, for our worship in Pentecost. We gather in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. 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 And there is our handy dandy little light coming up. Uh, the, the hymn today is Breathe on Me, Breath of God. And this will also be part of our, um, yeah, for those of you that can't see, it's a picture of disciples with little tongues of flame and a descending dove, but they also have masks on. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh, nice. Oh, no. <laughs> but no social distance. You mean we're going to get robbed? Uh, not that kind of mask. Yeah. <laughs> Here we go. We worship. So we gather this morning to worship the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. We journey and talk together through the unknown of stay-at-home orders and invisible COVID-19, in addition to our regular life cares and challenges, a little more than usual. We are like those disciples speaking in many languages and being filled by the promised Holy Spirit. So I have a mini message, and I know there's uh, some younger folks among us who might want to get their noses close to the camera because this again is a, it's a little bit of a visual. Uh, today is Pentecost, which is, uh, I understand, a birthday, not only for the church, but also for Susie Blankenbiller, who just had a birthday on Friday. <laughs> so I think maybe as a congregation, uh, let's sing a happy birthday to the church and to Susie B. Ready? Happy birthday, happy birthday. to you. Happy you. Happy birthday, happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Susie. Happy birthday to you. Thank you. Thank you very much. It's, it's You're like, like a 30-part round, Susie. <laughs> <laughs> 
So uh, Pentecost is, a, is an exciting day in the church year. It's when we celebrate that God gives the Holy Spirit. And here's the challenge uh, for the mini message, if your noses are close to the screen. And that is this. What is the same in these three pictures? Ooh, the doves. The doves. Excellent. And what else is the same? Um, sure. Yeah, there's a circle around each of the doves. Is anything else similar? Stained glass. Stained glass. Now, was that Henry answering or was that Susie helping him out? With me. Oh, okay. Yeah, thanks, Susie. <laughs> I think Susie channeled Henry. <laughs> Could possibly be. <laughs> so we have three pictures. Anything else that's similar in each of these pictures? All round. They're all round, yeah. Where? <laughs> yeah, what, what's different in these pictures? They're all pointed different directions. Oh, way to nail that one, Tammy. Like Yay. That. They are. They're all pointed different directions. And that's something that's pretty important for us as a church. Uh, the first two are pointed towards each other. And that talks a little bit about the unity of our community, the way that, that God makes us brothers and sisters working together. The other one is kind of pointed up a little bit. And that reminds us of the divinity of God or that God is the highest power in our lives. The one that's pointing down is the one we focus on today, because today when we read from Acts and in the Bible, it says that the Holy Spirit comes down on all the disciples. So we don't exactly, that's exactly right. We don't have to climb up to God. God comes down to us and not only to us, but in us. The Holy Spirit is in us. And that is such a wonderful gift that uh, God is the one who's doing the acting on us. So when we mess up, God forgives us. When we're here in the world today, God fills us with the Holy Spirit, just like God, Jesus promised uh, to send us that paraclete, that holy helper, that comforter. So that's why uh, as we look through the, the pictures in worship today, you'll see that dove that's descending, and it looks a little bit like fire, uh, because one of the ways we talk about the Holy Spirit is being uh, like fire. But notice the other two, the, the one in the middle has an olive branch to remind us of the peace that passes all human understanding. We're going to hear about that in the gospel. And then the first one has a rainbow. Now, who in the Bible had something about a rainbow? Oh, both of the rainbow and the branch were in Noah. Noah. Noah and the olive branch. Yeah, way to go. And so that reminds us of the promise and the good news, both with uh, Easter, which we're at the end of the Easter season, is that God's promises happen. Sometimes they take a while. Sometimes they're hard to recognize, uh, but God's promises do happen and they're fulfilled. So please remember the doves, even as you look at birds, I know the birds around us are getting ready to, uh, to hatch the eggs. Uh, there's a lot of activity in birds. So please remember the Holy Spirit every time that you see a bird. Let's say a prayer. Come on. Dear God, thank you so much for giving us the Holy Spirit, for being in us, for coming to us. Please help us also to use that Holy Spirit, use those gifts to share with others your love and your peace. We work together as brothers and sisters in the family and in the community. Amen. Amen. Hey, thanks for playing the game. Uh, the Lord be with you. And also, and with, also you. With, you. with you. Amen. Let us pray together. Oh God, on this day, you open the hearts of your faithful people by sending us in, into us, your Holy Spirit. Direct us by the light of that spirit that we may have a right judgment in all things and rejoice at all times in your peace. Through Jesus Christ, your Son and our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit. One God, one God now and forever. Amen. Amen. Now, I had a little fun. I, I actually had worship pretty well together by Wednesday, and then a whole bunch of stuff happened nationally. So uh, you'll see there's little bits and pieces um, talking about diversity as we go through worship today. So for those of you that cannot see, I have pictures of all kinds of uh, unique underwater creatures because in Psalm 104, uh, it talks about the beautiful ways that God creates the world. 
I'm going to read this for you. It starts at verse 24 in Psalm 104. Oh Lord, how manifold. Oop. Sorry, my internet connection's unstable. I hope this works. Oh Lord, how manifold are your works. In wisdom you have made them all. The earth is full of your creatures. Yonder is the sea, great and wide. Creeping things and innumerable are there. Living things, both small and great. There go the ships and Leviathan that you formed to sport in it. These all look to you to give them their food in due season. And when you give to them, they gather it up. When you open your hand, they are filled with good things. When you hide your face, they are dismayed. When you take away their breath, they die and return to their dust. When you send forth your spirit, they are created. And you renew the peace of the ground. May the glory of the Lord endure forever. May the Lord rejoice in his works. Who looks on the earth and it trembles? Who touches the mountains and they smoke? I will sing to the Lord as long as I live. I will sing praise to my God while I have being. May my meditation be pleasing to him, for I rejoice in the Lord. Bless the Lord, O my soul. Praise the Lord. And thank God for making all those diverse and beautiful creatures, including us. Our lector today is Jack. And Jack's going to be reading from Acts chapter 2. The coming of the Holy Spirit. When the day of Pentecost had come, they were all together in one place. And suddenly from heaven there came a sound like the rush of a violent wind. And it filled the entire house where they were sitting. Divided tongues as fire appeared among them. And a tongue rested on each of them. And all of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other languages, as the Spirit gave them ability. Now, there were devout Jews from every nation under, under heaven living in Jerusalem. And at this sound, the crowd gathered and was bewildered, because each one heard them speaking in a native language of each. Amazed and astonished, they asked, are, these, are not all these who are speaking Galileans? And how is it that we hear each of us in our own native language? Parthians, Medes, Elamites, and residents of Mesopotamia, Judea and Cappadocia, Pontus and Asia, Phrygia and Pamphylia, Egypt and parts of Libya belonging to Cyrene, and the visitors from Rome, both Jews and proselytes, Cretans and Arabs. In our own languages, we hear them speaking about God's deeds and power. All were amazed and perplexed, saying to one another, what does this mean? But others sneered and said, they are filled with new wine. But Peter, standing with the eleven, raised his voice and addressed them, men of Judea and all who live in Jerusalem, let this be known to you and listen to what I say. Indeed, these are not drunk, as you suppose, for it is only nine in the morning. No, this is what was spoken through the prophet Joel. In the last days it will be God declares that I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh. And your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. And your young men shall see visions. And your old men shall dream dreams. Even upon my slaves, both men and women, in those days, I will pour out my spirit and they shall prophesy. And I will show portents in the heavens above and signs on the earth below. Blood and fire and smoky mist. The sun shall be turned into darkness and the moon into blood before the coming of the Lord's great and glorious day. Then everyone who calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, be, to God. be to God. Our second reading is from 1 Corinthians chapter 12, starting at verse 3. And no one can say Jesus is Lord except by the Holy Spirit. Now there are verities in gifts, but in the same Spirit. And there are verities in service, but the same Lord. And there are verities of activities. But it is the same God who activates all of them and everyone. To each is given manifestation of the Spirit in the common good. To one is given through the Spirit the utterance of wisdom and to another the utterance of knowledge according to the same Spirit, to another faith by the same Spirit, and to the gifts of healing by one Spirit, to another the working of miracles, 
to another prophecy, and to another discernment of spirits, to another various kinds of tongues, to another interpretations of tongues. All these are activated by one and the same spirit, who allots to each one individually, just as the spirit chooses. For just as a body is one and has many members, and all the members of the body, though they are one body, so it is with Christ. For in one spirit, we are all baptized into one body. Jews or Greeks, slaves are free. And we were all made to drink of one spirit. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. God. And our gospel today, thank you very much, Jack. Our gospel today is from John 20, starting at verse 19. And this is actually set on the evening of the very first Easter. When it was evening on that day, the first day of the week, and the doors of the house where the disciples had met were locked for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. After he said this, he showed them his hands and his side. Then the disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. When he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven them. If you retain the sins of any, they are retained. The word of the Lord. Thanks be Thanks to, God. to God. So for those who can't see the picture, I want to point out that the sermon today is entitled uh, Pentecost <laughs> in the Midst of Chaos, Time for Holy Boldness. And there's a footnote because uh, this sermon was heavily influenced um, both by that term, holy boldness, which as far as I know is coined by Deborah Mumford. She's a professor of preaching uh, and money matters at Louisville uh, Presbyterian Theological Seminary in Kentucky, and also by the Reverend uh, Bill Worley, who is a conference minister in uh, our local Penn Southeast uh, United Church of Christ conference. And this is different uh, for those of you on Wednesday uh, that were part of Bible study. Um, we had a sermon pretty well done by Wednesday. I was inspired by our study group, um, and the sermon was pretty good, if I say so myself. I was nice and neat. It had a clear, memorable analogy. It was full of peace, the peace that only Christ can bestow after his senseless death at the hands of the religious authorities and Romans. And then I watched the news on Thursday, and I had no idea what was going on. I saw fire, but these tongues of flames were not Pentecost. There was a senseless death, but George Floyd is not Jesus, and there is no resurrection back to earthly life for him. There is overwhelming grief, and there's righteous anger, but there's no peace. There's chaos. So instead of preaching on John's gospel, as I had initially planned, the Spirit got into me, and I couldn't rest until I witnessed with that holy boldness. Today's sermon is strongly influenced, as I said, by two preachers, uh, Deborah Mumford and Bill Worley. They challenged me to dive into this chaos of Pentecost without counting the cost. First, Bill pointed out the ironic contrast of the hymn, Breathe on Me, Breath of God, and George Floyd's quote, I can't breathe. And over 100,000 victims of COVID-19 who also came to the point where they could not breathe. I will not share stories now, but some of the deaths I've seen haunt me. There's also the contrast of suffocation and then the in-breathing of the Holy Spirit at Pentecost. The disciples, that is the 11 without Judas, plus one Matthias, who was just chosen to replace Judas, and the other disciples, and there were others, men and women, about 120 who had been following Jesus, as shared in the chapter before this in Acts, all being inspired. Literally, that means breathing, having life breathed into them, inspired by the teaching of Jesus, inspired by the witnessing of Jesus giving new life. Even occasionally, like Peter, being caught up in the chaos and proclaiming, you are the Messiah, the son of the living God, from Matthew 16, 16. These are among the people who receive that in-breathing of the Holy Spirit. And Peter preaches at that time. Peter, who denied Jesus just 50 days before this Pentecost feast. And Peter's not drunk. He is full of holy boldness. He has received the Holy Spirit just as Jesus promised, an advocate, a paraclete, remember, a helper, and maybe, just maybe, this advocate loosened Peter's tongue and loosens mine today too. 
And maybe the Holy Spirit loosens your tongue too, filling us with anger at the brokenness of racial relations in our country, filling us with grief at all the loss of breath and life, filling us with a stirring that will not allow us to stay silent, the Spirit working in us in surprising ways, like the disciples speaking different languages. Maybe it happens to you too. Sometimes words pop out of my mouth that others need to hear, but I had not planned them. Sometimes words pop out of my mouth that I need to hear, but I did not have them neatly and peacefully planned out. Sometimes our witness is visceral, chaotic. Sometimes it will ruffle feathers. Sometimes it will even make us uncomfortable with ourselves. The sermon's not an easy one to preach and it's not an easy one to hear. In fact, it's not even all tidy and I don't have all the pieces together because our world is a place where it is not easy to hear the news. And it's not easy to pretend that these events of COVID and division and anger and fear are not happening. We are not drunk. We are not separated from these realities. We're part of them. We're sent into this chaos with the ability through the spirit to witness. Some people's witness is making masks. Some people's witness is prayer. Some people's witness is sharing food. Some people's witness is calling one another. Some people's witness is writing to elected officials. Some people's witness is voting. Some people's witness is preaching. Even if they started out as a fisherman with a hot temper like Peter or a shy kid in Philadelphia like me, whatever your gift, the point of Pentecost is that these divine gifts of the Spirit are given for us to use. The gifts have a purpose, and so do we. No one is exempt. Men and women are given the gift of the Spirit. Jews and Gentiles are given the gift of divine breath. Slaves and free people are inspired, given life by this Holy Spirit. And we need to have that holy boldness. We need to use that Holy Spirit. We are filled, just as Jesus said, to be the body of Christ. We are baptized into one body. And today our body is aching for air, aching for life, aching to be unified, not uniform. And God is providing air and life. What will we do with this gift in this season of Pentecost. I don't have an answer, but I do know that we have many, many, many weeks of Pentecost. We have many opportunities for witness. We have many opportunities for reaching out, many opportunities to use our wide variety of gifts in our community and beyond. So may the Holy Spirit fill us with holy boldness and guide us, even if it's not neat, and even if it's hard, to rely on him fully, to rely on that spirit in us and that spirit in others around us. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. To him, his Holy Spirit enter in. Um, these are beautiful, beautiful lyrics, and it's played by an intern on guitar. So I'm going to introduce you to Brian Odin. He'll introduce himself and then I'll go back to the lyrics. Hi everybody, it's intern Brian. That looks like we might. Brian over at St. Paul's Lutheran Church in Warren, Illinois, coming at you with this hymn of the day of the week. Now this hymn is um, O Holy Spirit Enter In and it is um, based on a very old chant from um, the 15 or the 1600s. So the way it translates to guitar is a little different than a lot of the hymns that we typically do. Um, but we'll see how it goes. And um, either way, the lyrics are, are wonderful. So um, it's number six or 786 in your ELW. Oh, Holy Spirit. And in our hearts, Lord, begin and make our hearts your dwelling. Shut out the soul, O light divine, out of it and us brightly shine. Your strength in us upwelling in your Heaven 
cherish the blessings of God in our life. Please join me as together we confess our faith using the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, Almighty, creator of heaven heaven and earth. earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, God who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Virgin Mary, Mary. suffered suffered for for Pontius Pilate, Pilate. was crucified and died and was buried. buried. Descend to the dead. On the third day, the third day he rose again. He ascended to heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father and will come to the judge, the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, sins, resurrection of body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Uh, here's something a little bit different. Um, we're going to try passing the peace. And uh, since Pentecost people were speaking different languages, I'm going to encourage those of you that do speak a language other than English uh, to try and do that. We might have to do this version of passing the peace. I think hugging is still a little challenging. Uh, mm-hmm. But if you want to give a virtual <laughs> hug, you can do that. It's a lot safer now than when we're in person. Um, so may the peace of the Lord be with you all. And also with you. Also with you. Ladies, I'm Medea. Ladies, I'm Medea. That's Kathy. Yeah, what she said. <laughs> Sign language. I love you. Peace. 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 Thank you for having a little bit of Zoom fun with our passing of the beat. <laughs> I like it. Uh, after our passing of the peace, we have the offering of gifts. Uh, the Holy Spirit gives life. The Holy Spirit gives gifts to all. God gives us diverse languages, ethnicity, culture, and backgrounds, and we are unified, not uniform. Uh, Beth is shared this week something she was not able to find the music for uh, but thankfully it's on youtube what would we do without youtube uh, the hymn is come holy spirit by john w peterson it's sung by the snowmass chapel gospel choir and i could not figure out where uh, that choir is singing but they sing beautifully enjoy mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. 
certainly are the church today. Beth, thank you for finding that and sharing that. I'm glad God gives some the ability to be musical. We continue uh, with prayers, prayers for the whole church. Sadly, again, we have a, a tragic death uh, to share. It seems that this is happening uh, so frequently now. Brennan, who's a 10th grader at Ole, uh, died in a car accident at the end of this week. Um, we hold him and his family in our prayers with, uh, with George Floyd and the victims of the shootings and all those uh, whose lives and livelihoods are being upended in so many different ways. But let us pray. Lord God, we are the church today. And you are with us and in us. Lord God, we thank you for being that sustainer that provider, that life in our lives. There are so many things going on that are bigger than us and sometimes even more than we can handle. So we thank you for making us part of this community, for giving us one another to care for one another, to cry together, to pray together, to laugh together, to hope together, to dream together. Lord God, please help us by hearing our prayers that we bring to you with holy boldness we pray that you'll bring comfort 
uh, even as you welcome in all that have died into your arms. We thank you for welcoming Brennan and George, Bob and Jaden. We ask that you will enfold and embrace all those who are grieving in your holy comfort, particularly the families of Brennan and George, Bob and Jaden, Donald and Shirley, Joyce and Harry, Abby and Mary, Jack and Faith, Dorothy and Jean, Rachel and Dorothy. Lord, we pray for all those dealing with tragedy, those coping with floods and typhoons, tornadoes and freezes, other storms and trauma, violence and racism, and people with hatred in their hearts. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. Lord God, we ask with, for prayers of healing and hope for all who are isolated by COVID-19 and all who are previously homebound, uh, whose plight we understand just a tiny bit better. Please continue to be with Betty and Lester, Richard and Michael, Sharon and Pearl, Leon and Betty, William and Grace, Paul, Chuck and Carol. We pray for all those who are in hospitals or rehabilitation, including Joyce. We pray for all those who choose to remain anonymous and those we don't even know who are waiting for treatments and upcoming surgery. We pray for all fearing COVID, including people who are incarcerated or those living in nursing homes, staff, families everywhere. Lord, we pray for each of us, for all our brothers and sisters around the world, for safety and health for all of your children. Lord, in your mercy. Our prayer. Lord God, we lift our prayers for help for all who are in hospice, those with chronic conditions, including Hung, Arlene, Claire, Bob, Steve, Darlin, Pat, Dorothy, Barbara, Jim, Jean's son, Brian, all who love and care for them and so many others. We pray for those whose needs are known to you, for Kathy and Nick, for Kristen and Elaine, for Teresa, for Bob and Roy, for Robert and Rhonda, for Shirley and Catherine, for Mick, John and Sophia, and all those we name in our hearts and out loud at this time. Lord, in your mercy. Lord, we lift our prayers of thanks. Thanks for those who are sharing their gifts as elected leaders. We pray that you'll continue to guide them to make compassionate and smart decisions. We pray for those running for election, those who will be voted in on Tuesday and those who will not. We pray for those who are researching, using their gifts to find medicines and vaccines, not only for COVID, but for so many other challenges and medical issues around the world. We thank you for the gift of seed and soil. We thank you for the gifts of agricultural workers and pray especially that you'll continue to bless all seeds and soils and agricultural workers and our local farmers. We thank you for those in the armed forces sharing their gifts. We pray that you will continue to watch over them, bless them and keep them, particularly Lily and those in Dorothy's family we lift up today. We thank you uh, for all those who give their lives in service. Lord God, we thank you for healthcare workers, for myself, for AJ, for Tammy, for all those continuing to work for our benefit, for Stir work clerks and teachers, for law enforcement and poll workers. We ask that you'll continue to be with those who are going back to work and for those who do not have work to go to. Thank you, Lord, for all who can and do stay home, even when it's isolating, even when others are getting out and about. Lord, we thank you for people who are watching out for one another people who give financial gifts and offerings to your glory. And we thank you, Lord, for people who pray, praying for one another until something happens. Lord, we thank you for all these people, all these ways that you bring us together through your Holy Spirit. And we ask, Lord, in your mercy. You are our, our prayer. Lord God, we raise up prayers of joy and thanksgiving for all those who continue to heal. Reading Hospital has had now 300 and more people recovering from COVID-19. We thank you for the recovery and the healings of Tiffany, of Ben, of Connor. We thank you for the good news of Tamara's cancer-free test results and Bob's good news. We pray uh, with thanksgiving for all those who do have work to return to and those who are staying healthy. We thank you for those who are celebrating anniversaries and birthdays, including Roger and Kathy and Susie. We thank you for big momentous occasions 
like those that are graduating or finishing the school year, especially for Henry uh, sitting up, for Ethan and Mark finishing off their school year, for Charlotte as she gets ready for a new year at school, and Adam. Lord, we ask that you'll continue to be with all those who are students and all those who are teaching and guiding them at home and as they go back to group settings. Please be with all those who are working in healthcare, Lord. And please continue to share our joy and thanksgiving at life and at its surprises. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. I'm sorry, my dog is, is winning this one. <laughs> <laughs> uh, let us pray together the way that, that Jesus taught us. <coughs> Our Father, heart in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom, thy kingdom, thy kingdom come. Thy kingdom come. Thy will, be, thy will be done. Earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses. trespasses. As we forgive, we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation. But deliver us, for us from evil. Nice. Nice. The kingdom, the power, the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. The hymn is O Day Full of Grace, and the lyrics are on the screen. And this, uh, I'll point out, is sung by the Association of Lutheran Church Museum uh, Musicians, excuse me. And it was done for Pentecost. It was just done on the 27th of May, as it says on the screen. Some of you cannot see the screen. With deep gratitude to 960, 960 vocal and 364, 364 instrumental participants from all across North America and around the globe united in our prayer for God's spirit to bring healing and newness for the days when we will again gather in song with our hearts aglow. This is a Zoom version of this hymn. It'll be five minutes long, so may this be a time of prayer and receiving that healing and newness that the Spirit brings us. Are you sharing the screen, Pastor?
Sorry, Rama. I hope for you that that was uh, an uplifting gift of music. Mm -hmm. There is uh, so much in the way that the Spirit lifts us up and carries us forth and fills us with all good things. Um, and nothing is bigger than our God. So even with everything going on in the world today, uh, we are with God and in God and carried forward by his grace. So may the God of power, your spirit comes to us, to people and sets us in motion, embolden us to move into love, service, justice, and possibility. Help us to better care for and steward the ways in which our world moves. This we pray together. Amen. Amen. Well, boldly as witnesses and serve the Lord. To that we can respond. Thanks be to God. Amen. Thanks be to God. Thank you to God. Amen. Amen. Praise God, y'all. Thank you, Ethan. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Ethan. <laughs> I love Ethan's Heinz ketchup shirt. Where is he? Give us a full view, Ethan. I love it. Yeah. <laughs> I also saw you photo bombing your grandma. Yeah. <laughs> so cute. Uh, just a reminder, I will uh, scroll the announcements shortly. I want to give you a chance to see each other, share your t-shirts and some smiles and some waves. Uh, there is a council meeting. Remember, it's on Thursday right now to accommodate my, my work schedule at the hospital. So Thursday at 6 is council. We'll probably be setting up a, um, a meeting soon then for the um, reconnect task force following that. Um, the finance committee did meet last week and so everybody in the congregation will be getting a, a letter, probably an email really, uh, soon reminding us that there is a capital campaign going on. Um, we have just one month left in that. We have some very generous folks. Uh, we raised 13 of $20,000 already. Um, so please, please do look for that. Uh, we have an opportunity to, um, to refinance our mortgage. And so that's what this is. And if you go online on YouTube, you can make a donation online or uh, mail a check into the office at church. So Please do be mindful of that as we continue to be good stewards of the money that's given to us and shared with us. Uh, refinancing will be able to reduce our, uh, our debt payments and, uh, and help us put more money um, into the other aspects of our ministry. Uh, thank you for gathering together at next week still. We are online. It looks like we might be uh, online forever, um, which is probably a good thing. There will be a time when we get back into in-person worship, but we're still working towards it. Um, so please do be mindful of uh, one another as you continue. Thank you so much uh, for continuing to pray for each other and call for each other and check in and enjoy some fellowship, uh, please, with one another. I see some people are coming off already. Uh, we have some people that joined us. Cole, it's a pleasure to be with you today, and hopefully um, we can talk back together. Uh, in many languages. So any announcements that um, 
you need to make it at this point while everybody's uh, listening before we start individual conversations. And uh, we do have adult Bible study after this. We'll give you probably 15 minutes or so for conversation first. Shout out for Bible study on Wednesday at nine for a fun Friday uh, on Fridays at nine. Anything else? Okay. Well, please, uh, please enjoy conversation together and I will scroll some of the announcements. Uh, the announcements as usual are um, both on YouTube and uh, on Facebook. I did just put them up this morning. So if you're looking before they were not here, I apologize for that. Have a wonderful day. Thank you, Thank you Pastor. Thank you, Pastor. You also. Nice to talk with you, Sandy. Thank you. Bye, everybody. Be safe. Bye, everybody. See you guys. Bye, everyone. Bye, everyone. Have a safe week. Bye, everyone. Bye, Sandy. Bye, everybody. Okay. This is Bob and Linda saying goodbye to everyone. Everybody have a safe and wonderful week. You too. Thank you. Thank you. Enjoy your kitty cats. Yeah. <laughs> goodbye, everyone. Bye. Bye, See you. Bye Henry. Bye. Get the keys ready. <laughs> Bye. Bye, everybody. Watching a very moving memorial service in Washington, D.C. this week. Um, I ask God to please speak to my father, my uncle Ralph, and my uncle Richard, I mean, and my uncle Russell for what they did. I had the opportunity to talk to uncle Richard and thank him for what he did. Thankful that you did, Bob. Good for you. He served in all four branches, right? Yes. Wow. Wow. <laughs> we need a harmonica song. We do need a harmonica song. Yes. The last one was a little shaky because uh, he was inducted into the Army National Guard when he was 93 years old. <laughs> <Wow>. <laughs> <laughs> I told him you're going to be sent to the Mexican border. <laughs> it's not been yet. <laughs> so he served fully in three branches and then has a, uh, uh, from 93 on, nine, um, a fourth branch. Now his birthday is coming up in a couple of weeks, isn't it, Bob? September. Oh, nine September. Nine. Okay. 9-11, actually. Okay, 9-11 is his birthday. How appropriate for a patriot. Wow. <laughs> My birthday is on Tuesday. Oh, yeah. Happy birthday. Oh. Coming week? Happy birthday. Happy birthday, birthday. Happy birthday Bob. Happy birthday, Bob. <laughs> Happy birthday, Bob. Happy birthday, Bob. Yep. I'll drive by your house today and blow my horn at you. Okay? Uh, <laughs> I won't have any signs out. <laughs> Did you say it was your 35th birthday, Bob? 21. Your 35th. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> In truth, the 72nd. All right. Wow. Tuesday. Still young. Yeah, have a yeah. wonderful day. Karate's take care. Are you Thank guys still you. down in the Outer Bank? No, we actually came back a little early because it had rained for every day. We were down there and it <laughs> rained every day. Uh, we saw sunshine. I'm so very sorry. So, yeah, well, we had those two big tropical storms roll up. We yeah. just had timing. Oh, yeah. We got everything done we needed to get done. So a lot more work got done than pleasure, but we did not see the sun. Mm. <laughs> And or then, the beach. We, I took my dogs up one day to the beach, and it was so cold and windy uh, <laughs> that we brought them back. But you guys had a wonderful week here, I hear. Mm -hmm, yeah. Lucky you. It but was it's hot. Good to be back. Good to be back. Very hot. Yeah. Good to have you back. Yeah. I think good you got back. Too. Yeah, thank you. Well, everybody have a great, wonderful day. Thank you. Well. You too, Sue. Take care. Bye. Bye. -bye. <clears throat>
Kathy, what is that beautiful background? We're in Luther's living room, study, dining room area. <laughs> 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 and this is my Pentecost shirt, by the way. That's what the P is. <laughs> oh. <laughs> As a Phillies fan, I appreciate that. <laughs> I miss baseball <laughs> and well, soccer. Uh, me too. And basketball. Soccer's on message. What was that? Oh. My my shirt has a message. Love Truth you. is elementary. Oh, and God love. Nice. I like the blocks. Mm -hmm. I hadn't figured that out yet. Mm -hmm. Thank you for helping nice. me out with that, Mary. And Susie, I as far as I've seen, there is one telephone picture. So just me. Uh, as far as I could tell, there was two. Uh, oh, there was two. Okay. Throughout the service, two. There was two, but now it's only yeah. you. Yeah. Oh. Oh. Well, good. Uh, Joan Miller or Darlene Reiner. Uh, both of them were hoping to get on, but didn't know that it would. Uh, you know, <laughs> they particularly Joan would have an opportunity. So, um, so good. So somebody else did come along. Good. So thank you for reaching out. I appreciate that. And for those of you, well, that I had my cell phone with me just in case they had a problem, so they could check in with me that maybe I could help them through it. But I didn't get any calls, so it's good some, somebody did get through. Good. Okay. And, uh, and by the way, Kathy, um, I'll go ahead. Sorry. Go ahead. Well, I was just going to say uh, when we have Sunday school, I'm leading Sunday school today, mm -hmm. and. Um, it, it helps if you have a Bible handy, so um, just a couple minutes, you know, to maybe find a Bible. If, if not, we'll manage without it, but if you can get one, that's great. Okay, deal. And thank you, Kathy. I know it's on, but I like going down to see it live in uh, Philly, the Union. Yeah. yeah, me too. Me too, but that's not happening right now. No, it's not. And when Anna and I were over with Anya in November, she took us to see Bochum play FC Bayern Munich in Bochum. Nice. So that, that's a highlight. Sure was. <laughs> it looked like, uh, for those of you that cannot see the, uh, the chats, there are some conversations going on. Uh, one of the questions is from the Kleins. Uh, Mary, what is the picture behind you? Phil was curious about that. That is Williamsburg in Virginia. It's the entire town. Wow. I can. Do, 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 do. Okay, where am I? There I am. It's. That's about as good as I can get it right now. But it's Williamsburg. <laughs> well, I got to get back to work. Okay, thank you for taking a break. Okay, I'm, it's good you to see you. Take care. Myself and the dogs are I'll see you later. Pastor, one thing. Did you see what's on my shirt? Uh, no. There's turtles and there's frogs. Oh, nice touch. You keep fully relying on God. Keep those yes. frogs going. <laughs> yes. And I will see everybody later. I got to work till 10 o'clock tonight. So I'll see everybody later. I'll be thinking of you. Bye, Tammy. Bye, Tammy. Bye. Bye, Bye. <coughs> Bye everybody. Have a good week. Too, okay. Bob. Bob, hope things keep working out the way they need to. Eat your fiber. <laughs> More fiber. Apple More fun. fiber. <laughs> Lots of Cheerios. <laughs> <laughs> so how's Roy doing? Good. I think Roy's going to be able to answer that himself, I think. He was... Yeah. Can you see him? Good. Yeah. Well, there uh, you are. Hi, uh, Roy. Good morning, Roy B. Morning, hi, Roy. Morning, Roy. Hi, Roy. Hi, Roy. Yeah, it's a hi. It's a blessing. He's doing much, 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 much better. Good. 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 Wonderful. He looks very comfortable. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe too comfortable. <laughs> <laughs> so did with her legs up and. You know. My spot, brother. It's my spot. <laughs> we know. <laughs> we know. <laughs> oh, we know that. 
All too well, Roy. <laughs> you are all in, in, in shorts. Yes. Yeah, yeah, that's a difference of our temperatures. <laughs> 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 He's got the Coumadin base and I have the older woman base. <laughs> <laughs> He watched two big trees come down last weekend out in front of the house that they so they didn't blow down. But we had oh. a big project here last weekend. Wow. Mm. Really opens the house up. <laughs> oh. We're at your mom and dad's house? That yep, front yard. Wow. They had to come down. Mm. Did they you supervise it, Roy? They were rotted from the bottom. Roy, did you go out uh. and supervise it? He sure did. <laughs> 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 it, but it is it is best to get them down before they cause damage. Well, that's what we were going for. Mm -hmm. <coughs> Another thing I enjoy watching are all the mm. beards growing. Uh, these new white beards that are cropping down, whatever. There's Roger and Ken. <laughs> Phil, Phil <gets> <laughs> <up>. <laughs> Anna, you said white beard, beards. I just don't shave. Well, I, I maybe I should just say beards, but it they okay. seem to be white. All right. Well, <laughs> oh cause yeah. Just because it comes time, with age. Good and dark. <laughs> <laughs> Roger, you had a white beard when we were, when I was still in school, sir. No, it wasn't white back then. I think it was a little more blondish. Are you sure? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I don't recall that. That's my call anyway. Now it's yeah. white. <laughs> we'll go with that, right, Roger? <laughs> Roger, yeah. it looks like it slipped down. You know, it's, it came it down. It has. You're yeah. right. <laughs> On the fuzzy bunch. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <sighs> well, if oh. it to get back to church, I want to see all these beards, you know, still there. How's that? Oh, God, no. <laughs> oh, if mom were around. The first thing she told me the the one day I was able to talk to her FaceTime like this, you need a shave. And I went, yeah, mom, I know. <laughs> I go, but no one sees me. And she goes, yeah, but you need a shave. Okay. <laughs> That's the mother's job. <laughs> yep. Yes. Pastor, are you still on? I am, yes. Uh, can we add uh, my friend Joel to the prayer list? Sure. Mm -hmm. And what, what type of prayers would be most... Uh, most Healing. Important? Healing. He's back in the hospital. Well, there's him this way. Hmm? Next week, the eighth, that's right from now. Eighth, that's seven. Okay. By the way, Mick is not any better. Still. He's not improving at this point. He's in his second week of the virus. He's not worse, but he's not better. Okay. It, Anna, it took AJ at least two weeks Thanks. to get through. And then after that, you're still, you're still terribly like fatigued. And I think the cough was the last to go. Very strong, yeah. <laughs> My friend Dan was four, four weeks from the time he got sick till he was really kind of functional again. Four weeks. So, uh, Pastor, the big wall in the hospital where all the hearts are, yes. that must be getting full by now. It is, yeah. There was a celebration this past, or no, last, last week, Thursday, uh, was the 300th patient that went home uh, ah. after recuperating. So, yeah, there. Uh, for anybody that's at the hospital, which I hope you're not, but if you get over um, the Fifth Avenue entrance, um, you pretty much have to be a patient to be able to see it because nobody else is allowed in yet. Uh, but there's there's a whole wall of um, different color hearts and very inspirational uh, quotes. Yeah. Yes, I'll have to check that out. 
Uh, well, we're adding people's names. Could I add friends of mine, Please. Joe and Naomi? Yep. Also for healing. Okay. Thank you. Yeah, we're thankful to hear Tamara's good news. Yes, wonderful. Absolutely. That's, I agree. Unfortunately, my phone is now not doing well. She's on chemo. I can say that. And she's unfortunately couldn't even be at the restaurant working right now. And who is that? Um, my Vietnamese friend. Okay. Huh. We talked before about the quarterly being um, the, the title of the quarterly, uh, the quarterly course was Justice and the Prophets. And it's um, justice, isn't this an, an interesting topic for this particular time? And uh, very important. But the today's specific uh, lesson is titled Practice Justice. And in our class, we always start with a beginning discussion question. Um, <clears throat> but we don't, you know, there's no need to dis discuss it. Um, although I'll, I'll give you the opportunity. There's no reason not to because the pastor said you can unmute yourself. So if you have an answer to the discussion question, feel free. I'll give you some time. Uh, the, first, the question is just to get your mind thinking about what the, uh, the lesson it will be about is what is a choice? you once made that caused your life to be richer and more worth living? You can think about it or if somebody has a, has an example of one of those choices, let me, you know, speak up. <clears throat> I have one also, if anyone's having trouble unmuting, just raise your hand and I can help you with that. Go ahead, Kathy. Uh, I can share one. Um, years ago, maybe maybe 12, 15 years ago, um, I got a phone call from a friend who teaches German at a, a university in Florida, and she asked if I would be willing to put my name on the ballot for um, vice president for the American Association of Teachers of German. And I, I, that's it's just not me. I can... Um, I can definitely be bold when I need to, but I'm a lot happier just kind of sitting back and watching things go by and add input when, when asked. Um, I said, sure, go ahead. And, and as you know, I ended up being vice president and then president for the association. I have met literally thousands of people because of that and have friends all across the world um, because of the German language, not just in Germany, but you know, like in Madagascar yeah. and in Japan and in Latvia and, and Finland. And some, when we go somewhere, almost always, I try and get in touch with those people and see them. And you know, like that was not anything that I went and saw it, but, but God just kind of dropped it in my lap. And it has been an incredible blessing since then. Sounds like certainly you made the right choice there, didn't you? <clears throat> Great. Anybody else have anything in particular? I always, I always feel that for my, for my purposes, um, taking the job as a school nurse in Exeter was, uh, was definitely a, a choice that made my life richer and more worth living. I, uh, a position I enjoyed very much. Anybody else can relate? I think Anna had unmuted at one point. Oh, go ahead, Anna. Oops. Anna, try again. You just remuted. You were unmuted. There you go. Am I all right now? Yep. Mm -hmm. uh, I, <clears throat> to me, just getting married. Ah, I can say it in a few words. It obviously changed my life, and it mm -hmm. was it was a good marriage, and it was I I just thought that was a a good decision. Mm -hmm. Sounds like it. I don't know. Is Marianne is Marianne still with us, or did she? No, oh, Marianne's there. No, you can't hear me. No, we hear yeah, me. No. you're good. I hear you, Marianne. What we do though. When I got married, I even left my family, came over. Yeah, here. that was that was yeah. quite a choice you made. It was a big, big 
choice to make at 18. Yeah. Oh, wow, yeah, at 18. Okay, well, let's see what that has to do with our lesson. Um, first of all, I'm going to give you a little background. You can see that the scripture is from Jeremiah, <clears throat> from Jeremiah 21. And uh, there, uh, Jeremiah 21 is, is in three sections. Um, and verses 1 through 7 describe the events that took place in, uh, 15, in 588 after King Zedekiah, now, King Zedekiah, um, as it turns out, was the last of the uh, the kings of Judah, <clears throat> and King uh, Zedekiah revolted against against Babylon, and of course, we know that didn't work out too well. And Zedekiah was the twentieth and last king um, of Judah, and he had been installed by. Interestingly enough, he had been installed by Nebuchadnezzar, who was the Assyrian. Um, the Assyrian king who, as Babylon, as Babylon invaded uh, Jerusalem, but he put Zedekiah in, in office, basically. He was installed by uh, Nebuchadnezzar, um, and, um, and he was there until the second siege. He, beca he stayed there. There was more than one siege. The first siege, and a siege, by the way, uh, you know, is sort of a, a military operation where they shut off access to an area, like maybe uh, surround uh, a military group surrounds maybe a city and, uh, per and refuses to let, let goods get in or individuals get out. And so it's a, it's a, very, um, uh, a very difficult situation for those people. You know, that's a, an isolation way more serious than anything that we're experiencing, of course. And, and so Zedekiah was installed after the first siege, and he remained um, in, in, as king until a second siege, which then led to the destruction of Jerusalem and the temple. And, um, and so we're talking about, uh, about that time frame. And Jeremiah, Jeremiah was a counselor to uh, Zedekiah. Jeremiah was, um, was a prophet. Uh, and of course, when we talk about prophets, we aren't speaking about um, anybody you want to offer what you think a prophet is. What does a prophet do? Makes money. <laughs> I just messed uh, with you. Kathy Fagley was about to talk and I, she was still muted. <laughs> <laughs> what does a prophet do, Kathy? He gives prophecy. <laughs> he, he tells gives, about and, 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 Wait, okay, what? Tell us about what's going to happen. Well, the kinds of prophecies that we're talking about are not necessarily talking about what's going to happen, but it's words from God. He, the prophet is like a messenger. They get the words from God and relay it to the people. And in many cases, um, it, it suggests, you know, as it does with Jeremiah, do this or this will happen. And so in that regard, um, certainly can be seen as, as what, uh, for telling what will happen. And so, but Jeremiah was, uh, Zedekiah's, um, um, he was his counselor and he, but he never listened to what, uh, Jeremiah said anyway, you know, he was the king. And so he didn't listen to him anyway, but it was, uh, it, it's important to remember that that's Jeremiah's position right now. And in verses, let me see, one through seven, <clears throat> You can see that the city was under siege, and Zedekiah sent Jeremiah um, to the uh, to the people to, to the to the Lord. I'm sorry, to the Lord to ask if the Lord would maybe um, give them a wonderful deed, a wonderful deed that would uh, help them to make their way through the siege. You know, he wanted to ask big giant favors, and that uh, Jeremiah went to to God, and God. Uh, God's word came back, not only that he would not protect Jerusalem, but he would fight along with Nebuchadnezzar to bring divine punishment on Judah. So he was, uh, as you can see, he was not happy with Judah uh, at the time. And we're going to see why as we, as we go through the lesson. So, um, and as we go through the lesson, we'll see that the first two, the first three verses, eight through 10, are where Jeremiah uh, comes back and talks to the people. 
and verses 11 through 14 talk about where he talks to the royal house or he talks to uh, Zedekiah. And what he had to say was not what they wanted to hear. They didn't like what, um, you know, what, what Jeremiah had to say. And uh, that's, that's usually true. Jer- uh, prophets do not bring good news usually. They bring um, news that the people are not happy to hear. And that's why it said that uh, prophets are not, very, are, not, are not really liked by their people. So it was a difficult position to be in. Okay, so uh, we're going to read the scripture, and is there somebody who would read the scripture? Because I'm, you know, I don't want to do all the talking here. Somebody, I don't know, is somebody raising their hand? They'd be willing to read. Can you see it on the screen there? I think Mary Swartz uh, unmuted first. So. <laughs> okay, great. Go ahead, Mary. Read, okay. read verses Jeremiah 12, 8 through 14 for us. Okay. And to this people you shall say, Thus says the Lord, see, I am setting before you the way of life and the way of death. Those who stay in the city shall die by the sword, by famine, and by pestilence. But those who go out and surrender to the Chaldeans who are besieged, besieging you shall live and shall have their lives as a prize of war. For I have set my face against this city for evil and not for good, says the Lord. It shall be given into the hands of the king of Babylon, and he shall burn it with fire. To the house of the king of Judah, say, hear the word of the Lord. O house of David, thus says the Lord, execute justice in the morning and deliver from the hand of the oppressor anyone who has been robbed, or else my wrath will go forth like fire and burn with no one to quench it because of your evil doings. See, I am against you, O inhabitant of the valley, O rock of the plain, says the Lord. You who say, who can come down against us, or who can enter our places of refuge? I will punish you according to the fruits of your doings, says the Lord. I will kindle a fire in the forest, and it shall devour all that is around it. Okay, thank you, Mary. You can see you can see why this was not particularly popular. Um, Zedekiah sent Jeremiah to the Lord to ask for a miracle, some kind of a special favor, and it doesn't sound like they're getting any special favors here, to be honest. So, uh, our theme statement here: uh, this populace had for too long failed to exercise justice, exercise justice, falsely believing. That the Davidic king, the king, that's Je- uh, Ze- uh, let me think, uh, Zedekiah, Zedekiah, that the Div- he's the king of David, and the temple that kept them safe forever from God's judgment. They were being rather complacent. They felt that, um, you know, they were in. They had it good. They had a Davidic king, and they had the temple, and that this would keep them safe. But Jeremiah declared that judgment had come. The king of Babylon would serve as an agent of divine wrath. So, um, so there's, this is where we are now. And uh, the, usually what we do is we go a couple verses at a time. And in discussing, discussing verses 8 through 10, you may recall I mentioned what this is. Um, this is his, his presentation, Jeremiah's presentation to the people about what, um, about what God's answer to their request was. And uh, God's determination was to destroy Jerusalem, and it wasn't debatable, and it couldn't be revoked. And so this was no wonderful deed that they ha- they were hoping for. Um, there was no rescue like they experienced in Egypt. Um, in Egypt, of course, what happened uh, when they were rescued in Egypt? What what's the the remarkable thing that happened at that time? We have a couple of people answering, but they're um, they're muted right they're now. They're muted. You had Moses. Moses, right? And and the big event that we we generally refer to as what the the exodus. the exodus, yeah, the exodus. And God obviously had a hand in that with you know through Moses, but um, and I mean, can you be surprised that maybe the people you know, that maybe the people expected something similar from their God? Does that, um, 
they were the chosen people after all. So if they went and asked God a favor, what might they be expect? Might they expect that that would come through? I think they might. It's not like they're asking uh, the parting of the Red Sea or something like that. You know, right. Right. Although I'm not sure what, what would be uh, <clears throat> more dramatic um, parting of the Red Sea or a, or a retreat uh, or a withdrawal of all of the uh, troops of Babylon. I'm not sure. <laughs> maybe they're, maybe they're kind of on equal footing there. One's about as miraculous as the other. I, I'm thinking. Good point. <clears throat> Why were they being punished? I mean, what, what were they doing wrong that warranted this type of reaction to just dis destroy them instead of help them? What were they doing wrong? Well, throughout, I'm, go ahead. I, I don't know enough about Jeremiah, so that's why I'm asking this question. And what, does anybody have any thoughts about it? Anybody else want to comment Wendy, about what they might have been? Wendy's waving her hand and ready to go. They weren't go following ahead. the covenant. They weren't following the, the, the law. The law, right. And what, and what was the law meant to do? The law was meant to do what? Well, if they followed Have, the law, they would receive blessings. And if they didn't, they would receive curses. Okay. Well, it, it would bring them into relationship with, with Yahweh. Okay, it, 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 was, it was a means of maintaining their relationship. We, we talk about this a lot in our Sunday school class about how, you know, God, God reached out to the people and he offered this covenant. He offered several covenants and he offered these covenants because he wanted this connection with the people and who kept breaking it, who kept breaking the relationship. Who kept breaking man. the covenant? I'm sorry? Man. Man. Man, right. Yeah, absolutely. And women. Yeah. <laughs> People. Oh, <be> fair. <laughs> <laughs> all of all of the people, they, you know, they would they would come back momentarily and and then they would start to to leave again. And they would break the covenant in many ways. Um uh, certainly by, by worshiping idols or by, um, you know, by, by not being the people that God wanted them to be. And I think that that's the primary, I'm, I didn't, I didn't read back really far. So I, I'm not really sure specifically what it is here. I don't believe they were, um, they were uh, worshiping idols here. In fact, they were depending on, on God and what, what physical relationship did they have God when they lived in Jerusalem? They were living in Jerusalem. What was the physical thing that they could turn to that gave them faith in their relationship with God? They had the temple. Yes, they had the temple. And what was important about the temple as far as God goes? Well, that's where God was. Yeah, God resided there. That was what, and, and we know that God did not, did not stay just in that spot. We know God as being an all-encompassing kind, of, uh, uh, kind of being, but they felt very confident in the fact that this was a God, no, God identified um, the, the temple and, and the Holy of Holies area in particular, where he, that was his residence, and he would stay there. And so they trusted, they trusted that, you know, as, as was mentioned in the theme statement, they were in like Flint, you know, they didn't have to worry too much, things would be good. They had God living in Jerusalem, they had a king of, you know, that was in the, in the line of David, and, and why would that be important? What did God tell David? When, when David became king, what did he tell David? He said, you'd be blessed, I will be my God, you'll be my people, was the promise of Abraham that was repeated for King David. Correct. And he also, and what did he also say about the, the, the um, kingdom? That's not what, that's not the, the reign, David's reign. What did he say about David's reign? Something about forever and ever, I think. 
Yes, yes, that his descendants would be would be the kings uh the kings of Israel uh forever. You know, his descendants and where did that take us eventually? We're going, you know, outside of Jeremiah here now, but uh Zedekiah was the the 20th and the last of the sitting kings of Ju- Judah, but years down the line what did that lead to in in David's in David's line as king? If Jesus, Jesus, yes, Jesus, Jesus was, and he's a king on the throne of heaven for eternity. And so, so uh, God's promise to David was that there would be a king for for the people forever. And so, so those two things are very important. They believed they had a king that was going to last forever in, in David's line. And they had the temple where God reigned and so, where God resided. And so that was very, very uh, comforting to them. And they felt, well, what could possibly happen? Well, they, they, became, they became complacent. And, and when, people, when people are, you know, when we, when we as people are given uh maybe a little too much rain <laughs> i don't know uh sometimes what happens hmm. they get bold. like cat what well they get bold and then they try to take over yeah yeah they get bold they get a little bit uh they're not as careful about about working toward that important relationship with God. They get a little, a little relaxed about what, you know, remembering what God wants. They focus more on maybe themselves than on, on God and what God, if God intends. With, with that point made, Susie, can I circle back around just for a minute? The, oh, please. Yes. The, my study Bible points out, the issue with Jeremiah is idolatry because in that area, there are so many different religions that they were oh, okay. not only worshiping the, the statues that they had made and they didn't think it was a big deal, um, but also that there were high grounds. And so people would go to the tops of hills uh, under tallest trees and worship there, um, obviously without going to Jerusalem. Okay. So, ah, okay. Also so that is another, definitely. Yeah. Yep. Their neighbors had many gods, so they were just kind of worshiping whatever uh, flavor of the month. Uh, okay. <laughs> and, and God, God's a jealous God. It didn't go over so well. Right, right. Yeah. Okay, thank you. I appreciate that. I hadn't, I hadn't uh, come across that, so, so I appreciate that. So obviously, if they're, um, if they're not, uh, if, they're, if they're worshiping idols, um that that's that's a a huge break with with uh with Yahweh um to to emphasize the the justice part um throughout the old testament justice is a very um a very important um an important feature of what of what Yahweh expects of the people and and so if they're not uh, if they're if they're doing both, this is a this is like a double whammy. They're they're worshiping idols and they're they're um, withholding justice for for those who who need it. So so in that in the first in those eight verses, in, I'm sorry, the eight to ten, the he's talking to the people and he's offering them a choice. Did you pick out what the choice is? What is the choice that they have? They're, let me say they're beyond saying, okay, 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 we'll, we'll follow you, we'll do what you say. They're beyond that. So now that's not a choice that they have, that the people have at that particular moment. But what is the chance that the people have in, in verses 8 through 10? So it, it, this is Kathy. They can stay mm-hmm. in the city and die. Right. Mm-hmm. Or they can and go out and surrender and then they'll live but they'll live like as slaves right exactly that's that's exactly exactly so what would you choose (laughs) which direction would you like to go 
kind of big on life. Yeah, and they, they, it seems like maybe they were too. Um, one of the things that the author of this, uh, of this series mentioned is that traditionally what happens when the, the, the difference is not die by the sword in the city. This is a little bit different than uh, what might happen in reality uh, in many cases, is that, see, if they're, if they're surrounded and nobody can get in, and nobody can get out safely, then what happens in that city if they can't get any products in, people can't get out, what happens within that city? I don't know, I think I'd dig a hole under the wall and run away. Oh. <laughs> well, we'll talk a minute about what happens if you come out when you come up on the other side of the wall. But if you stay within the city, you know, what is, what is the, the calamity you face if you stay in the city and you're surrounded by an by an enemy force well, over time you get hungry the you city do he dies because you can't get food in you can't right get the water Famine. that's I, right i was thinking of masada when you in that sense uh go ahead uh, it's that's uh, it's one of my history things. <laughs> uh huh. Go ahead. Well, they were surrounded and they couldn't get out, so they all killed themselves. But oh, they killed themselves. Okay. All right. Well, now that's interesting because because you know I haven't thought about that part as far as staying within the wall. That within the wall, you know, certainly they they are starving. And you're talking, yes, about killing themselves. I hadn't really thought about that, but the sword, because uh, it, it says, um, uh, you shall die by the sword, by famine, and by pestilence. And pestilence, of course, being, I'm sorry? It, your water would be going bad. Your Everything right. would be going bad, and you would get ill. Ill, right. So it's by famine and by sickness and by the sword. And the sword you know, in this regard could actually be by your own hand or by people fighting among themselves, maybe within the city and uh, fighting over what meager goods are there. But the, uh, but the author also says that if you did dig under the wall and come out on the other side, there are troops there who, you know, that's where the author suggests that, that one would be dying by the sword. However, in this, in the, in Jeremiah is saying that the other option is, you know, kind of wave the white flag. You know, you come out there, you know, they're waiting to see what's going to be happening and, and you, um, uh, help me. Can't think of the word. You surrender. Um, surrender. Thank you. <laughs> yes. Yeah. It's one of those days. I don't know what to say. So. Okay, so so the people, so this was his message to the people, and and if um, so, let me see what I had here. When they were slaves before in the Bible, when you know we talked about that, they were slaves almost, and and ex the Exodus was a little more than eight hundred years prior to this situation in uh, in Jerusalem. So. But that 800 years uh, didn't diminish their um, their reverence for you know the the fact that it's a very, it was a very important uh, occasion in the history and of course Jews today continue to consider that a very important day in their history. So and it was about 400 years before that, um, and they didn't need to to uh, th there was no need at that point to surrender. They, you know, Moses led them out and, and God helped them through, through the Red Sea and through the wilderness and to the promised land. Um, but that's not what was going to happen here. So this is the choice they would have. They could either, they could either die in Jerusalem or they could surrender and, and be taken, taken, um, taken as captives, uh, which meant, slavery you know in their situation but they'd be alive and as pastor mentioned she said they you know choosing life okay so um 
let me see. So the people were very surprised by this, uh, you know, this answer, because as of course they were expecting uh, God to be on their, Jeremiah, God to be, the Lord to be on their side. Okay, so then in, in verses 11 through 14, um, if you can, is, is that still up there? Can they still see that yes. scripture? Okay, yes. so 11 through 14 is where Jeremiah goes and talks to the, the house of the king of Judah. Okay, so he's going to the, the royalty there. He's going to say, tell the king. Interestingly, he told the people before he told the king what, what uh, the Lord had to say. But he goes on and he says, hear the word of the Lord, O house of David. He says, execute justice in the morning and deliver from the hand of the oppressor anyone who has been robbed or else my wrath will go forth like fire and burn with no one to quench it because of your evil doings. So now he's, he's suggesting an opportunity. Uh, he's making a suggestion to the king of Judah, to, to Zedekiah, that, you know, the, the problem is that there's not justice. You're not offering justice. And that is what I'm, um, I'm, my wrath is, is coming down on you for, for, for that particular uh, fault in, in, the, in, what's, in what Jeremiah is saying here. So we don't know the actual de- situation where Jeremiah is uh, taking this me- message to them, but um, uh, verse 10 seems to suggest that, uh, that the king is in, is in David's line and he might still be able to avoid the, entr- the, the inevitable by, ex- by executing justice. So especially justice for the most vulnerable. And who do you think, the, who do we see as the most vulnerable? Well, not who do we see as the most vulnerable, but throughout the Old Testament, who is God suggesting and pointing out as the most vulnerable he needs for us to provide justice to? Anybody have one of them they'd like to mention? We had orphans and widows. Orphans and widows, yes. Poor people, the oppressed people. The poor and the oppressed. Who might, who might be the oppressed besides the poor? We see, you know, this, rela- this is where we can see a relationship to, to our world today. And on the fourth, the fourth ones who, who, uh, were the Jews were expected to specific, especially provide justice to because they weren't receiving justice. One more. The stranger. The stranger. The stranger. In fact, they mentioned the alien. And it, let me see, isn't that even in our scripture, the aliens, which, of course, is how we, you know, how we refer to, to the strangers, the, the aliens. Um, no, I'm not seeing it here. It's in one of the other other verses uh, before we before this, I think. So the alien. So um, this has always been critical in, in Israel's relationship with Yahweh. That that justice, as well you know, as well as um, focus and maintaining that relationship with Yahweh. That the that justice is so important. Um, okay, so it's interesting. Uh, in the timing of this, I don't mean the, the, the global timing. I mean the, what time, when is this supposed to start that they're supposed to exercise, execute justice? What? In the morning. In the morning. In the morning. What is the significance, do you think? What would you say the significance is of mentioning it in the morning? Execute justice in the morning. Because it's the beginning of the day. Yes, the beginning of the day, meaning what? It's a new start. A new start, a new start, a new start. And also, how about before you think of anything else, it's the first thing you're going to be handling that day. The king is not given the opportunity to sign any edicts, not to put a stamp on any on the important papers. All of that should wait because what, what is first and primary and most, most important is, is the justice that, 
that Yahweh is expecting them to offer. Um, execute justice in the morning and deliver from the hand of the oppressor anyone who has been robbed. What do you think robbed of what? I mean, you, you know, you think immediately of the objects in my home. If I've been robbed, I deserve, I deserve justice. But what other kind of, what, what else, what might, what might the Lord be talking about when he's talking about those who have been robbed? Robbed of what? Spirit. I'm sorry? Spirit. Robbed of their spirit. Robbed of their spirit. Robbed of their spirit. Okay. Anything else? Robbed of autonomy that folks might not have had the ability to make decisions for themselves. Or okay. Uh huh. That they want to. Sure. Sure. Something else? I was I was thinking like uh, robbed of their their dignity their their um, you know their their ability to live live free their ability to be equal to to the others you know there's many ways of robbing people beyond taking away something physical that they own um, many you know many things we can see happening in our world today. Um, you know, where people are losing things they own, as well as these other uh, less tangible characteristics uh, of, of life. Okay, so, so the, the, the king is not supposed to delay. He's supposed to start, start immediately to, to provide this justice. And um, speaking for the Lord, Jeremiah is saying that, uh, that continued reign and survival of the nation depends on justice. I mean, he's not saying that, um, okay, we got to start this job tomorrow and we're going to do our best. He's saying the, the, your reign, the reign of the king of, you know, as a, a descendant of David and, and the survival of the nation depends on this. So it's, uh, it's, it's certainly very critical. Okay. Um, so, what did you think? What do you think? That, how do you think the um, the king or the people responded and uh, responded to this to this little uh, this this declaration that Jeremiah is giving them from the Lord? What do you think they decided to do? Do you think they decided to to stick it out, fight it out? What, what do you think they decided to do? Is that chapter 22? Yes. <laughs> oh, well, well, we didn't, we're not there, but what do you think their decision was? Oh, no. That's not Comcast today, I guess. Oh. <laughs> Well, so so do you, well. What what do you think comes after this? Does anybody know what happens after um, after this the second siege? What happens What happens after the second siege by the Bab, by Babylon by the Babylonians? I don't know, uh, Susie. Susie, yes. Will you just one moment here for the answer to that question? Because Bobby has been. Oh, to... certainly. Oh, and... sure. Is Bobby on the line? Yes. So, hi, Bobby. Hi, Bobby. Hi, Bobby. Hi. Oh, it's he... so good to hear your voice. He has been asking me to come to church for weeks now, and now he called during this time. So, God, Bobby... well, it's great to hear from him. Oh, yeah. Tell him you're 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 bored, right? Yeah. He wants to come. Uh -oh. So. Well, now you are at church, Bobby. Way to go. <laughs> Yay. I'm going to job in PA. Okay. All right. All right. Well, listen, Bobby, I'll talk to you. I'll call you later because I'm on Sunday school right now. Okay. Okay. Say goodbye to everybody. Goodbye, everybody. Bye, Bobby. Oh, bye, Bobby. Take care. Bye. Be well.
<laughs> Love you too. Bye. All right. Thank you, Maggie. All right. Talk to you later. Okay. Bye. Bye. Oh, bye, Bobby. I'm oh, sorry. That was great. He's been trying to do that, and I was hoping he didn't do it during church, so it worked out. Thank you. Uh, now, that was great. He could so, come during church, too. That's okay. It would have yeah. been great because he could have talked to more people. Well, that's true. But he, yeah. he much misses church. He tells me almost every day that he misses church. So uh, uh, anyway, we I'm miss sorry. him, back, too. Back to that question. I answered the phone. I didn't get that question. Okay. <laughs> well, we were talking about what happens. You know, this is the second siege. Babylon, Babel, the, the Assyrians came in and they had the first siege and they sort of took control of things, put the king in that they wanted, that sort of thing. But they let things go for about 10 years. Now they started another siege. And what happens after this one? Do you, what happens to, to the people of Judah you know, eventually, you know, after what you know, when the Babylonians have the Assyrians have have uh, the Babylonians have come in, they go into exile. They do. So, what does that indicate then about what their decision was about? Do they surrender or do they fight it out or how does or do they just let themselves die away? They surrender. They surrender. Right. They surrender, and that that was the, the an option they had, and that was that was their their choice of life. They they chose to do that. So uh, let me see. Um, I have notes here. Sorry. <laughs> uh, <clears throat> okay, so so God God would allow the Babylonians to come in, and. They not only uh, conquered the people, but they destroyed, you know, destroyed the walls of the city. They destroyed a lot of the city and, and they destroyed the temple. And so it was um, pretty much a, you know, a complete, a complete destruction that they, they caused at that time. So, and uh, let me see here. There was a, something I wanted to read from the leader's guide. And of course, I don't know. Oh, here. I put it right here. Okay, so it says, No one hearing Jeremiah's words could doubt that ancient assurances to the royal dynasty and to Zion would burn with the city itself, fueled by evil deeds and fruits of their own doing. So it was, um, it was, pretty, much, it was pretty much a devastation for everything they knew. They, their lives changed pretty, pretty drastically, and... Um, <clears throat> and of course, the exile uh, began, you know, as as a result of their um, their their separation from Yahweh and not following the you know the the demands that that Yahweh had for maintaining that relationship. So now we have there's a, a something that I'll read to you. It's called the Word Today, which relates to. Uh, relates the scripture that we've just talked about to the the world today. It's not the world today; it's the word today. But it's it's exactly what it what it does is relate it to our world. So the author says, "I write these words early on the morning of July fourth, twenty nineteen. So it's sort of a different world at that time. But uh, it was America's Independence Day. As an American patriot, I normally enjoy the Fourth of July celebrations, cookouts with friends and family, local parades, fireworks, and another opportunity to reflect on God's generosity to me and to my country. Today, however, I'm troubled." by feelings of ambiguity mixed with not a little anxiety. If we assume, as I do, that God continues to speak to the church through the Bible, then we have to wrestle with passages like Jeremiah 21:12 and ask, what might these words mean today? You can look at that scripture there where he says that um, about execute justice in the morning is the, is the verse that's being referred to. What might these words mean to us today? Execute justice in the morning. 
Two mornings ago, the U.S. Department, now this was back in July a year ago, two mornings ago, the U.S. Department of Homeland Security's Office of Inspector General revealed that the Internet had already told the world, what the Internet had already told the world, immigrant, de immigrant detention centers include squalid, overcrowded conditions with standing room only cells, inadequate food, and unsanitary facilities. To say that people of faith ought to be concerned is an understatement. I pray that this situation will be radically bettered by the time you approach this study. Apart from mounting public scrutiny, however, little incentive for change exists. Many detention centers are for profit, bringing millions to their operators. A fraction of those profits, without a doubt, finds its way back as campaign contributions to lawmakers who make this situation possible. Supporting the system is a narrative that blames those who flee violence and terror in their own countries for their own situation. Whatever one thinks about immigration policy, the conditions experienced by asylum seekers do not represent an execution of justice in the morning. Indeed, the mistreatment of immigrants fleeing horrors in their countries is in direct violation of the expressed command of God. This is a quote when a, this is a quote from Leviticus 19. When an alien resides with you in your land, you shall not oppress the alien. The alien who resides with you shall be to you an, a citizen among you. You shall love the alien as yourself, for you were aliens in the land of Egypt. I am the Lord your God. Jeremiah insisted that there were real life real-world consequences for acts of injustice and for any who would not deliver the oppressed from the oppressor. If the royal establishment would not deliver justice, Judah's leaders could expect God's wrath and destruction. No matter the promises to the house of David, no matter the glorious things spoken about the city of God, the, through the words of Jeremiah, God calls us and all nations to deliver justice in the morning. Is our morning almost over? So that was the uh, the author's reflections on this scripture as it relates today, and uh, certainly we, you know, he he dwelt on the alien issue, which was certainly a concern then and continues to be a concern. But um, with the results of the last week's, um, you know, injustices and the result of um, the result of the the violence that has re, has come about, uh, it's got some broader uh, understanding for us today. So, anybody have any any thoughts about <clears throat> um, about the word today, or the and how it relates to the scripture? <clears throat> Do you feel? Do you feel that um, that that our situation with aliens and 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 with with what's going on now with the the racial uh, what what appears to to be racial injustices, do they relate back to what Jeremiah Jeremiah's words from were from uh, from God at that time? Just to give you a visual, Susie, there are many, many pensive faces looking at the computer. So I think your questions are um, being being thought about, fomenting lots of lots of consideration. Yeah. Well, you know, you've got execute justice in the morning, like the first thing you do, take care of that. <clears throat> and geez, I don't know how to say this without like stepping on toes. Um, but, but that should be something that it, everybody in the United States and the world knows about. It would seem like that would be something that our leaders would react on immediately, make a statement and try to, <clears throat> try to settle hard feelings somehow, <clears throat> rather than just let it set for a while and see what happens and then come up with an idea. Mm. What I see Other? happening now is injustice against injustice. And although two negatives are supposed to make a positive, they don't. Mary, I think that was a great statement. 
That is just what's happening. Injustice against injustice. I can't imagine mm -hmm. people going out and doing what they're doing. It just doesn't seem to be the right way to find, to, to do it. Unfortunately, we do not have a leader like Dr. King was to try to show everyone that it's best to do everything by peace. I've been struggling with that a lot because I, I think what we're seeing is the, the people in Jerusalem in Jeremiah's time uh, didn't pay much attention until they were under siege. And I'm seeing, you know, frankly, I didn't hear uh, much news until cities were starting to be on fire. Um, so while I do not condone violence, I do recognize that it catches headlines. And it's so easy to forget uh, that there is injustice and there are oppressed. You know, I'm, I'm very entitled. I live in a very comfortable lifestyle. And when I want to, I can get lost in my own life uh, where it's pretty darn comfy. And so uh, while injustice is awful, no matter what direction it's coming from, um, I think sometimes we need to be shaken up. Sometimes we do need to step on toes. Sometimes we need to have that holy boldness. That's been a challenge for me to hear that this week uh, when I was kind of perusing what, what different folks were talking about. I don't think I take that holy boldness seriously sometimes. You know, and Jeremiah certainly put it out there. Um, and that was a hard place to be in front of the people saying hard things. And then in front of the king, he could have lost his head, kind of like Esther. Um, so Susie, I'm saying that there's there's a lot of room um, for us to, to do better as a nation, uh, for me mm -hmm. to do better as a person um, in being a stronger advocate in situations where folks don't have a voice. Mm -hmm. I, I like what you said about uh, do better as a person. Um, because, you know, in our country, of course, we have have the right to vote. And um, that, you know, that has some influence. Individually, we, we should vote. And in, that is our influence on national uh, policies. Um, but as individuals, you know, we, we also have a responsibility to, uh, to the oppressed and to, um, to, to justice in where we can reach personally. So I liked what, I liked what you said also about, um, and I, you know, I, I fall, I fall short there. As you said, it's easy to be, um, be content in, in the life that you have. Um, but it's not, it's not, you know, there are a lot of people in this world that their life doesn't come anywhere close to the life that I have. No, I even struggle. I, I think we made the right decision as a congregation to not be a polling place in the primaries. Um, but I also recognize that uh, that disenfranchises folks who maybe did not get a mail-in ballot or who do need to get to a voting place. It's a little more challenging uh, for mm -hmm. our community to vote this time. And um, so I, I struggle with that. While I think, again, it was the right decision for us as a congregation, um, it also makes it harder um, for some in our community to have their voice heard. Mm -hmm. It does execute justice. Justice is a word that I think is so misused in the judiciary system. Mm -hmm. Just listening to the commercials of they get justice uh, because they're family member had a bed sore and they got a large cash settlement and they got justice. To me, that's not justice. No, it's not. And it, and it bothers me because I just wonder if the cash settlement helps the, the bed sore, you know, do they put mm. money on the bed sore or something? You know, it justice, mm. the word is just so misused and you question what, what Jeremiah means by, execute or the, the lord through jeremiah says execute execute justice in the morning what justice are they looking for 
just being nice to people. They should do that anyway. So, for those that they can see the screen, I know the print is very, very small. But your point of justice, Anna, is fabulous. Uh, mishvet is the Hebrew word for justice, and those are the, the characters down towards the middle of the screen, um, towards the bottom. And the meaning is judgment. But look at all the other usages also for this word. It's arrangements, case, cause, charge, claim, crimes, justice, custom, decision, um, destruction, the matters of justice and injustice, uh, it's kindness, a manner, an ordinance, doing things properly or procedurally or within regulation. Um, it's a verdict. So even in, in the Hebrew, there are just a whole host of ways that, that this word justice is used uh, throughout the scriptures. And um, there I, I like kindness. I think that's a good de definition. Although it's it's different because in Micah six eight remember it's a do justice love kindness and walk humbly, so justice and kindness are are different. Sometimes um, sometimes doing the right thing is not kind. Not to everybody. Okay. Ah, that's an interesting statement. Doing is not always kind. Doing the right thing is not always kind. <clears throat> that one mm. really that one hits home big time one, one thing that that has been uh on my mind in fact I, I just started um my continuing ed class this week and there was a patient that i was with who was in restraints and the restraints were to keep the patient intubated the patient was awake enough to know that they were intubated and to not like it intubated means a tubes down their throat thank you so it tubes down their throat, it's keeping the patient alive. Uh, and those restraints are awful. To not be able to move your hands, to not be able to respond to the, the things around you leaves a person extremely vulnerable. And so while that was, I think, the right thing to do to keep the patient alive, um, the patient could certainly perceive that as everything but kindness. But it, it was a a necessary thing at that moment um, to keep the patient alive. And, you know, I, I think God's response to Jeremiah too is not seen as, as nice. You know, they're saying, hey, God, do something big. And God says, mm, no, not right now. I'll keep you alive, which is huge. Um, but you're going to have to swallow some humility. You're going to have to surrender. You might lose your city. You might lose your home, your livelihood. Um, so I, I think there are times when justice is kindness, but I think there are times when it does not come across that way. Great example. Thank you. One of the things that in, in this uh, passage that kind of gets me a little squirmy is the idea of being burnt with fire. And I see fire in it a couple of times. Have any of you ever been on fire? Mm, not recently. Uh, I think Mary has a story for us, though. At that, it, it just makes me very squirmy. It, the whole thing just... The idea of being burnt in any way, shape, or form after being on fire as a as a teenager, it just mm. scares the living daylights out of me. Have folks heard your story, Mary? Pardon? I'm not sure. Has this group heard your experience with it? Uh, I was on fire as a 13 year old. Um, my, I, I ran. Um, Heading for my parents, my brother knocked me down. He put it out. Third degree burns all over my back and, and my hair. Um, oh, and, and just even reading the fire part, parts of this, it just, it just makes me squeamish. You should have stopped, dropped, and rolled. Um, I agree, Ethan, but when that 
that pain hits you, you just don't think. Mm. But it, well, I think the people at the time probably could relate to that. Um, it was not as safe a safe a time as we have now, and so there are probably quite a few people who who had experienced burns, maybe not as extensive as what you're talking about, Mary. That sounded, uh, you know, really oh horrific. And uh, but it, it's you know it's a way that God made a point. You know that we. Throughout, you know, the parables in the in the New Testament and lots of references in the Old Testament, there, you know, God is relating ideas to the people through things that they understand, and so and you're right, they would understand that. You're you're right because if I heard that, you know, I needed to repent, and if not, there would be fire. I would be repenting. I well, would be very much so. Well. Well, and I think Ethan's point of stop, drop, and roll is a helpful one uh, because kids were having the experience that you had, Mary. Uh, we started teaching in school the stop, drop, and roll because mm -hmm. and we changed the fabrics that are used uh, in clothing so that some of them are more fire retardant. Um, and when something big happens, people do repent. I mean, that's the next chapter in Acts. 3,000 people heard what Peter had to say and said, oh my gosh, we need to do something different. Peter, what do we do? And he told them, repent. And they were baptized and 3,000 people were added to the church. And that's why we call this the, the birthday of the church. Um, sometimes it takes really horrific, uh, shocking uh, images or realities um, to head us in a, a different direction. And repentance, you know, being 180 degrees different, sometimes takes a, a lot of force to get us to turn our lives around. Okay. Well, there's a the 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 um, the author presents one particular verse as being, and it, and it applies. Uh, verse twelve is the is the verse that the the author promotes as the one that uh, we we should be remembering specifically from this lesson. And it's thus says the Lord. Execute justice in the morning and deliver from the hand of the oppressor anyone who has been robbed, or else my wrath will go forth like fire and burn, no one to with no one to quench it because of your evil doings. So we'll close in prayer. Uh, Lord, you command us all to execute justice in the morning. Help us to be the light of the world as we work for justice and are moved by our love for you and our neighbors. Amen. And we'll finish with the Mizpah benediction. May the Lord watch between me and thee while we're absent one from another. Amen. Amen. Okay. Thank you, everybody. Good discussion. Uh, Good job. Thank you. Look for, thank you. Look, look for signs. Look for signs of justice in the in the in the coming week and. Uh, See, hopefully we'll be, be seeing justice result from this turmoil. It will be wonderful to see. So, so thanks again. Susie, very, very, very nice. Thank you. I appreciate, thank, thank you. Very mind, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Echo, echo, echo. Bye, everybody. Thank you. So long. Bye. Bye, bye. Thank you so much, Susie. You're very welcome. Okay, everybody take care and have a have a good week. Okay, and your birthday you said uh, was just this past Friday? Yes, it was. Did you it was celebrate? a good day. We did celebrate. We celebrated with with some friend with some family so very socially distancing. So it was special. Still haven't been able to hug my grandchildren, but I'm thinking we're getting there. So that's what I was going to ask. Did you get to see your grandkids? I saw I saw three of them. Two are still in Columbus, but I talked to one of them uh, on the phone. The twelve-year-old isn't so much talking to grandma. So, <laughs> so, but that's okay. <laughs>
So, okay. Well, thanks everybody and uh, have a really good week and uh, look forward to seeing you all next week. Thank you so much.